Well, today I've paid a visit to Ost and reliving really memories of my youth. Uh, my uncle used to have a chalet up on the cliffs and we used to come here loads and loads of times during, during the summer, um, watching the ferry boats, walking down uh, the pier, going in the cafe and ticket office and then walking along this pathway which led down to the um, CGB pylon and the Severn Bridge. Right, well here I am at the old Oss Ferry Terminal and well, I can't believe what's going on here. There's lots of roadworks going on. In the background I can see the old farm building that I remember as a kid. So my uncle used to have a chalet up on the cliff tops here and we used to come down here to get the milk. So, I'm stood here right outside of where the ticket office was and there's not a lot left now just a little bit of a wall here and then if we look in front of us here we can see the entrance to the old pier and well you'd hardly recognize that it was a pier really but there's a footpath <coughs> running right down through the middle of it so we're going to walk down it now and uh, walk ourselves right to the end and just have a look and see what is left Right, well that footpath only goes so far, then we've got to the end, and now, to get any further, we've got to step down and walk through, and once we get round here, we can just see now the remains of the end bit of the pier. Now, it's really, well, I can't believe it, I think... And the mud as well must have grown up over the years um, so it's up level with the actual pier itself which is amazing really because this used to be all above the water so anyway we're walking we're getting towards the end now and you can see well, how it's all broken up over the years and, and what it's like now not a lot left luckily i suppose we're able to walk down here if we look ahead of us we can see right just to the end and i think if we can stand up on top of one of these beams we can probably see the end and you can see the end where it disappears into the sea where well, the cars used to come down through here get down to that end bit and then it was a right turn onto the little boats that were, they were here either the Severn Princess, the Severn King or the Severn Queen and then off they'd go once they were loaded up they could only take about 13 cars and then they were across where you can see over to the other side you can see Beachley to my right you can see the Severn Bridge built in 1966 we watched that being built down here and uh, up where my uncle was with his chalet from being up there on his own he suddenly had all the men who were working on the bridge uh, up there with him so they turned it into a, a sort of construction caravan park if we pan round there we are there's the cliff tops we can just see there the top of a couple of caravans because I think it's a caravan site now well, where that caravan is, the one I think on the right, that would be where my uncle's chalet used to be. And it was very near the cliff edge. And there used to be a lot of erosion. It was still there in the 70s and 80s, but I'd imagine it might even have disappeared over the cliff eventually. And if we pan round, we can look that back now, up towards the ticket office, and we can see how it's all the land sort of around here has suddenly sort of been reclaimed really from it's gone from mud um, to basically grass and then if we pan around a bit further we can see the new Severn Bridge of course that wasn't here when uh, when I used to come here as a kid and we can see a couple of people fishing fishing quite popular along here and then as we pan round back round to the end of the pier again and we can see 
the mouth of the River Wye over there. And that's where the boats used to go at night, once they'd finished for the day, the boats would go back over there, down the, down the River Wye, uh, and then park up at uh, Chepstow for the night. So it's been thoroughly enjoyable to come back here and see what's going on. Um, as you can see up there, there's a lot of works going on in connection with sea defences. And I think once they've finished, they're going to tidy up where the old ticket office was. And they'll probably have some sort of little display that will tell you about the history of the old ferry. Right, well, this is the footpath at the bottom of Os Cliff. And my uncle had a chalet up on the top and he used to come down here right from the 1920s. Then at some time or other, they decided to build these big pylons, probably in the 1950s, I'm not sure, but to link Wales and England power supply. And they built this pathway that leads down to the tower on this side. And it is a big tower. This must be actually the biggest uh, pylon tower I would imagine in the country. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk now along the footpath to the end, uh, where we are about now. If these trees didn't used to be there, but you used to be able to look up and you could see my uncle's chalet up there. And often if my mum and my nan were still up there, they'd wave to us. Uh, as we, uh, me, my dad and my uncle walked along the pathway. Right, well the difference between back then, and I'm talking about um, early 60s to early 1970s, all this vegetation didn't exist. You were walking along a platform, you decide you there was a drop onto the mud. So it's changed quite a lot. Now, as we get towards the end, and we can see the entrance way to get to the pylon there, and eventually the cliffs get a bit higher, and uh, you come to almost like a, a little beach eventually. Well, this is all very, very grass, but if we, if we spam round now, we can see that tower, and we can just see how tall that tower really is. Right, there we are at the entrance, and you can see it's called Os Jetty Tower XL65. No entry without authority. Right, so we look back, look up at the tower. If we pan round to the right, we can see where I said it was like a, it's really, it used to be like a beach, but uh, it's quite overgrown now. And over there, we used to walk down and check on the progress of the bridge up until it was opened. And in 1965, uh, I had my only ever trip on the Oss Ferry. We set out from Ost on the pier in my uncle's Austin uh, 1100. And then we swung out and we swung right under the Severn Bridge and there was uh, they didn't have all the sections in then so there was a couple of there were sections either side that weren't in so there was just the middle sections I think just hanging on their um, on their wires uh, so that was 65 of course it, it would be another year before that bridge was opened um, and once it was opened well it's fantastic really wasn't it for for getting over to Wells because before that you had to go all the way around to Gloucester and uh, it just shortened that journey and uh, I can remember going over there for the first time watching the opening on television they they televised it I got a feeling that we had the day off from school and uh, going over um, uh, it was great it just saved so much time either on queuing and going on the ferry or having to drive all the way around Gloucester Right, well I'm stood here on top of the cliff, right above the ferry, and this is exactly the spot where my uncle's chalet was. If I pan round, you'll see there's no sign of it. 
So my guess is it probably disappeared over the cliff many moons ago and they've turned this little area into a caravan park. There seems to be some permanent caravans here and uh, also seem to be some uh, traveling caravans. But uh, when my uncle was here, it was just his chalet stood on its own. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short video today. I mean, it's been enjoyable for me coming back here, you know, remembering sort of what it was like. And it just shows you how things change over the years, but it's still a lovely little quiet, little peaceful place. So thank you very much for watching.